Hello and welcome to another video from Sandra at Sandra's Stamp and Craft Studio. Today I'm bringing you another Dragonfly Garden card. A small group of my demonstrator friends are each bringing you two videos featuring this bundle as our April suite of the month. So let's get down onto the craft table and I'll show you my card. Here is the Dragonfly Garden Cling Mount Stamp Set featuring all these gorgeous images together with the Dragonfly Builder Punch. My card today will be featuring a black base card, a layer of basic white and one of the designer series papers from the Dandy Garden 6 inch by 6 inch designer series papers. So there's, there's several to choose from in here. I've chosen a fairly plain one because I'm going to be embossing on it. So just of some of the few that I have left from that set. So my base card is our standard length of A4 card and it's scored in half at 14.85 and then burnished on uh, along here and then folded back on itself again at just under the 7.4 centimetres. Now if you're in inches, this your card starts off at 8.5 by 11, so we want to cut at four and a quarter inches and leave the whole 11 inches scoring halfway at five and a half inches and score and then turn over and score back on itself again at two and three quarters okay so then i'm going to add a piece of whisper white that it measures 12 centimeters by eight centimeters or four and three quarters by three and a quarter and then add a piece of the designer series paper will measure 11 and a half by seven and a half or four and a half inches by three inches. So first of all, we're going to emboss onto this designer series paper. So I'm using my stamp set from the Dragonfly Garden stamp set with all these wonderful wildflowers on there. And then my Versamark ink pad and I'll ink this all the way over. And then stamp to the end of the flowers here. I've kept this one quite tall. Because this is difficult to see where that's stamped, I'm actually going to do this as I go along. So I'm going to take the gold embossing powder and slide this underneath. So where these, these extra little pieces on here, you can use your take your pick tool just to get those extra pieces off. It will pick up with your, with your tool. Okay, and that's okay. So I'll pop this back into the pot. And we're gonna take the Stampin' Up heat tool and melt that powder. When you're doing your heat embossing, you want to heat it just enough to melt that powder and turn on this occasion nice and gold and shiny. You don't want to waft your heat tool because it just lessens the heat. And also be careful if you're holding something um, near to your fingers, I like to use a wooden clothes peg to make sure that I don't burn my fingers if I'm working quite close to the area being heat embossed. Now I'm going to repeat that until I've covered the entire piece of designer series paper. And there is my finished piece, all nicely gilded. Okay, so I'll take my scrap paper away. So now we'll be adhering this onto my white matte layer using my Tombow adhesive. We'll now take another piece of Whisper White, the same size as the outside piece, 
So this is 12 centimeters by eight centimeters or four and three quarters by three and one quarter. And we're going to adhere this to the inside of our card. So that's the inside panel. And this piece will be stuck to the outside panel, making sure that these pieces line up. So in effect, that will be attached and will lean back like so. So how I do this, I'm holding this in position as to where I'd like to have that attached. I'm going to turn over my piece of card very carefully and mark with a propelling pencil just at the top and the bottom. This is the side that I need to put the adhesive on, so I'm going to put a big cross on there. And where these marks are, I want to be just on the inside. So if I put that to one side and I'm now going to apply the adhesive inside of that line. So I'm lining this up on the right hand side. And I'm going to make sure that that adheres on here and still is sitting in the centre of my card. So that will now open out like so and on the back you can't see the lines okay now I've done another piece here that I don't want to use the whole piece but I'm going to use a small panel here so that when you pull the card backwards it does look like this piece is sitting on there so cut off a piece whatever size you fancy so I'm just going to cut a small piece and I can use that for other cards and I will attach this one just inside so that it matches nicely with my card when I open it. And then this is where you'd write your message. For the embellishment on my card, I'm going to use my Memento Black Ink Pad and my Dragonfly Image. I'm going to stamp that up and get a nice good black coverage. And then also going to stamp my sentiment, thank you for your kindness. This can go the other way. And I'm going to stamp this along the edge of my card, keeping it nice and straight. So with my trimmer, I'm going to take my sentiment and trim that down to, in this instance, three quarters of an inch. And then leave the ends of the card, either side of the sentiment, about the same distance. So we'll deal with the sentiment first. I'm going to bring on my pick a punch banner. And this is in half an inch, three quarters of an inch and one inch in these three tracks here. So three sizes that side and three sizes that side. Because this is three quarters of an inch, it's going to go down the middle track. You can turn over and make sure you're happy it's nicely centered. And then repeat exactly the same on the other end turn over and make sure you're nice happy it's nice and centered so there's my sentiment so I'm going to turn this over and place some tear and tape through the middle of that greeting then here I have some of our reversible ribbon it's actually a nice shimmery peacocky effect. So to remove the end of that tape, I'm just going to use my tape or pick tool. You can do most and then I'm going to take a piece of the ribbon, decide which side you want to be seen from the front. Now I think I'm going to go more down the greeny for the dragonfly. When I cut my ribbons, I often leave them with a slant. 
So that's good because I'm going to have a slant each end. Okay, this is more the um, peacock side and this is more the lovely shimmery green side. So I'm going to come along this side and match that. Now I'm going to take a piece of my linen thread, which sadly has come off its spool. Um, so I just want to take an end piece. And I'm going to wrap this round a few times around this side. So I'll just take it, hold it still and wrap it round a few times, leaving a tail long enough to be able to tie a little knot or a bow. I'll go down round once more. And then tie that knot. Okay, so I'll trim an end off here now and get rid of that. So I'm going to apply this onto my card and we'll come back to the dragonfly in a second. So this is going to sit on here. Now I think those ends might be a wee bit too long. So I'm just going to take that down a little bit. I'm going to apply some stamp and dimensionals along the back. Now I'm going to use these ones because we've got black on our card. Did you know that Stampin' Up! do black stamp and dimensionals? Ideal opportunity for me to mention those to you. They are great for doing dark cards. Okay, so I'm just highlighting that today. You can't see them from the edge of this card, but I wanted you to see that when you take the backings off, they're actually black in Stampin' Dimensionals. So they're really handy. So I'm just gonna place this on my card to the right hand end, nice and straight, and the ribbon either end. Now, because I've left these loose, that sentiment is actually anchored onto my card. It's going to be an awful lot easier now to tie my bow. And we can just trim off those ends. There we go. So that's all finished. Now I'm just going to do my come back to my dragonfly. I have a piece of acetate here. Just bring you on camera. There we go. I have a piece of acetate, and I've put it on top of a piece of just a scrap paper, just so you can see what I'm doing. Now Stampin' Up have the Champagne Mist shimmer paint, and also the Frost White shimmer paint. Now, sadly, they're both retiring out of this annual catalogue. I'm going to be using the Champagne Mist today. It's just got that little bit of gold in it, which matches in with the gold embossing. Shake that up nicely. And I want to share with you a quick tip. When your Wink of Stella runs out, I keep the brushes because they are free water brushes. So I also use these. I've got one for the Champagne Mist, one for the Frost White Shimmer Paint, and then one for Whisper White Reinker and one for Versamark Reinker. So we need this one today. They come in really handy. I'm not using the barrel, I'm just using them as a paintbrush. They naturally had shimmer paint in there in the first place. So if any extra little pigments come out, then that's fine. So there's my brush ready to go. So I'm going to mix today. I'm going to put a tiny drop of the misty moonlight, just literally barely visible. And then because we've used the old olive in the rib ribbon there, I've got the old olive re -inker. And I'm gonna put the same there, maybe a little bit more of the green. And then once I've shaken this um, shimmer paint up, there's enough paint in the lid for me to use my brush and pick up some of that and place that down alongside. Okay, so I'm just popping all that nice shimmery goodness onto the acetate. 
You could use your silicone mat, but you must remember to wash it carefully afterwards. So now I'm just going to let these just mingle in together, mix them in, and hopefully I'm going to get a colour that resembles fairly similar to the, um, the ribbon that we've used. Because you can see that I've used more green than I did the blue. It's coming up a lovely shade. I'm really liking this. So start gentle. You don't want to have too much paint on your brush. And just go over. You can always add more, but you can't take the paint away. Okay, so I'll bring that up to the camera and hopefully you'll be able to catch all of that goodness in there like so. Okay, it's a little bit more rounded body just to round that off a bit more. There we go. And this can be used later. Okay, so just use my heat tool. And then with my dragonfly punch, I'll punch this out. When I cut my piece of card side to size, I allowed for an extra little one at the top here. So I'll punch that out. And then we have a little white dragonfly. So I'm going to bring these back and use another tiny drop of the paint. There we go. So now we're just ready to finish off my little card here. So I'm going to turn these up with my tweezers. I'm just turning that either side of the body or you can use your fingernails. And then this one, again, I'll just crease with my fingers either side of the body. And that can fill the gap probably in there. I also like to have it showing just off the card edge, so it's just got some detail. All we have left to do is the little ladybug trinkets. Just get one of those out. And I apply these using my mini glue dots. Everybody plays a part in doing what we Press those down firmly and that just gives a little embellishment on there like so. So there is my finished card with the two layers of decoration for your Z fold. And coming back to the centre. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today. Please subscribe to my channel on the button below and if you ring the bell too, you can be notified of future videos as I release them. My contact details will all be in the details at the end of the video and in the description below. Thanks again for joining me and I hope to see you again here soon. Bye for now.